As we build this car, it deserves the coolest of things. That is the smallest billet looking rotary engine. That deserves a wild intake manifold. This, perhaps, or maybe even this, or finally, at the end of this video, well, you guys gotta watch the video, see how this happens. It is hilarious how small the one rotor stuff really is. So it's the throttle body, right? So all the air for this entire engine. Wow. And that is, oversized. I am very fortunate that one of the people that have been kind of following the journey a long time has become a, an employee, an intern, but a paid intern. Oh, thank you. <laughs> brown nosing really does pay off. That's not a racist joke. It was. It, it was. No, it was. It was not. My nose is brown. <laughs> <laughs> a guy by the name of Finn has absolutely just kicked some ass. So let me show you what he's done. And then I just have to print it. There's some small modifications we need to do, but we need to get this all the way down to the ports on the one rotor. This is more or less what I showed Finn. I scanned the turbo, scanned the engine, placed them where they are now. Bosch has the throttle body. I didn't do this. It gave us the exact dimensions and of course the flange. I then told him that we're more than likely gonna have a water to air intercooler back here. That way the turbo can come up over, cool its ass off, and then go into the throttle and not cover the engine. And so then watch what he came up with his first day on the job. I told him a lot of requirements. One is that there are no injectors on the engine because there's no middle plate. So we have our injector rail right there. And the angle goes straight into the ports, almost to the back of the throat, as much as it can. You can see I scanned the, th the ports and he nailed the angles and without trying to hit the turbo. The hardest one is the center one, the semi-P, because it comes in at a straight angle, so you instinctively want to come in at a straight angle, so he made a nice tight radius, even though that's the one that's the closest to the turbine. What'll probably happen is these connectors will move a little bit. Nonetheless, there's tons of space. Now, the only area we have to worry about, and this is why I'm 3D printing it, is this right here. He made a version where we all were like, that'd be a sick version. And we were like, yeah, like like a throttle body has like a <laughs> heart shape and it's nice and compact. We all looked at it, we're like, huh. And then he hauled ass and made one that's more based on the FD throttle body. So that is just this. It looks so much bigger in pictures. We'll fill this area in a little bit more, make it, you know, have it say, you know, 6B turbo or some cool shit like that. But for now, we're gonna 3D print each of these pieces and then just see how the spacing fits and does it feel right on this engine. I've moved over to the Creality software. I've already got my little trees auto-generated and we're not looking for the perfect finish as much as we're looking for fitment. So I'm gonna get that thing fired up and then we'll be working on other things while this is printing. Today is the day where the project really feels like it kicks off and that always ends up with like at least a $150 order from ATP. They always have all the shit needed for like turbo stuff and so this has always weirded me out and it's not like you could, they could make it circular because they have this thing so it's always going to be oval shaped but ATP has a lot of different cheaper options and they have this thing which is like what 100 bucks and we would end up spending more time making our own so you think it's gonna work I hope so yeah that yeah looks, that looks pretty money it's got a little bit of a lip in there but uh, yeah, we port that. yeah you can probably port it it's that side right here ideally we go to a three inch titanium exhaust not my favorite design i understand you know casting and all that but like now that i've been doing my own like press fit type shit this kills me will it make a big difference no not really but there's a lip on the inside, even with it all the way up, I have to get rid of that lip. I just coming straight off the turbo, it's gonna reduce efficiency. We don't need air swirling. Finn reminded me that on FCs, which are single turbo like this, you port the wastegate. And that might be the case in this engine where we're gonna have to port it because that is a very small hole to let off boost. While it is 95 degrees here in the shop, I'll tell you one thing I don't mind having a little bit thicker and nicer is my Bombas socks. These things have been incredible. In fact, I want to show you guys, they're not brand new out of the package. This is after about three washes. Look at how ratty my shoes are and look at how good my socks look. It's quality fabric, it's quality material, 
and I absolutely love them. I have never spoiled myself this well with socks and I regret not doing it any sooner. Bombas as well is just a company that I admire. They've donated over 150 million items of clothing to those in need. Thanks to Bombas for sponsoring this video, making all of this possible. If you're interested in getting your own pair of beautiful, amazing socks, click on the link in the description and use the code ROBDOM or use the QR code and use the code ROBDOM to get 20% off of your first order. Bombas is now shipping to over 200 countries, including the US, so if you weren't able to get your socks and other things before, you are now. Feel good and do good knowing that your purchase does something really good. This is super exciting. So Finn has designed the one rotor intake manifold. Couldn't wait for Joel. We're cracking this open. Yeah, there. So we got some tentacles to pull off of this. That's sick. That's our biggest area of concern. Oh, that's the nut side that we might get creative with. Ooh, -wee. we'll probably have to make these a little bit bigger. So what Finn did is went straight through the center of each of these outer circles. That's going to hold that nice and tight under boost. And then he'll probably do the same thing to here. And I was just saying off camera that this area is now like really empty because there's no fuel rails there. There's no ignition coils there. So anything we can do visually to kind of fill that space with purpose is a win. And coming down at this angle here, we can still get tooling in there. I'm gonna go grab some fuel injectors for testing. For, for sure, this is where the position of the injectors are. I can take that rail stock and just cut those holes into it. Boom, we've got a little baby fuel rail. We've got really three choices. At the end of the day, less is more. So this is the base standard height of all these injectors. But that's what these also are as well, but they have extensions. Unfortunately, I don't have the O-ring on here, but it would sit like that. I don't want to jinx it, but that seems like it would hold. So that shows you the different heights we could have the fuel rail at if there was a reason to. This one, of course, would be also like this. Ideally, I'd want less. And quite frankly, the shorter it is, the more we can get to things underneath it. To make Finn feel comfortable here, I basically said that if this doesn't work, he's fired. Unfortunately, he still has a job. <laughs> <laughs> he, of course, has the bug of, I need to make it better. And you know, there were small improvements to this to make, but this is the same day we got done printing this and testing it. There's a lot of aspects of this that are not specifically machinable. And that's where I think, because of what we've got going on here, I think we're gonna do some really crazy stuff. This engine deserves it. We want to do it as light as possible and of course pay homage to Mazda's setup. There's just only so much you can do with CNCing it. The reason this was designed this way was that way the tool could come in this way and this way. Even if you had a five axis machine, you can only get so much in there from both sides. If all else fails, we'll go to the uh, more perfected version of this that we can machine. But this set us up to make that. And I guess uh, a couple of really cool things. There's the fuel rail. All the injectors shooting straight into the engine almost as direct as humanly possible. Wow. And the, the rail sits far enough away from the uh, turbo with plenty of heat shielding, air shielding. This is not a Pikes Peak car, so I'm not even worried about that at all. Very, very happy with that. And we move the injectors out so that way the connectors can sit up further away, meaning more heat shielding between the two. All in all, very, very pleased. We're gonna make it look pretty damn cool. We're just on a warpath to getting all the projects fired up all at once. This is super exciting because it just finished printing the entire one rotor intake manifold. <laughs> Let's hope that was done. That is so cool. I found that's actually the fan turning on, fan turning on, fan turning on. As it gets higher, it gets more aggressive. So thankfully online, on Creality's own website, people have made a new thing that shoots the, the fans up and the exhaust down. That way it's not blowing on your thing. Because look at smooth here, smooth here, at the same level that it's not over here. And we've learned the taller it is, the more that matters. 
That said, this printed out uh, ABS. Their updated settings are ridiculous. It's one piece, so Finn designed this with my input on what it had to do. Oh, there's some inside. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I was saying. That's so gratifying. You guys don't even understand. Oh, look at that. Wow. Finn did a bang up job on that. So the only thing that's kind of stuck on there is this. Oh yeah, that one's gonna be a, a bitch to get out. He gave me a flat area for the two sensors. He did what I asked on the fuel rail. It looks incredible. He even got the steps for the fuel injectors not to fall in there. There's only one thing left to do and that is put this on the engine. I allowed Finn to go in the direction of looking OEM. And this is OEM like 13BRE, hence 6BRE. And it's actually kind of accurate because it's a Cosmo engine. And these plates are Cosmo plates, so it actually really does earn that name. This fits inside the table size of most aluminum 3D printer companies. It's just big enough that it could be printed in one piece, which means no flanges, no extra weight. You see where we're going with that. That's nuts. The other thing is, all the injectors sitting out here so that the connector could be facing like such. Oh, nice. And then he modified this angle to try and clear this. So you can see the subtle differences in the injector holes, placements, but then more importantly, runners. And it just looks better. It just looks, general. yeah. I, lo I love what, how he did this. And straight line runners are awesome. They look more like the FD intake, but it just didn't fit with the theme that we're going with. Now, we don't need a tank. There is no need for a chamber on a one rotor. There's no benefit of sharing mutual air with another rotor and scavenging. It doesn't matter. If you look at all the white papers from Mazda back in the 70s, 80s, they actually straight up divided a two rotor. And you can see the benefits are scavenging on naturally aspirated engines. It's significant from an engine standpoint for free energy. One rotor doesn't need that, and it's also turbo. So there's a lot of doesn't pertain to us. One of the downsides is that we can't hook it as easily because this hits. We'll use the Billet Pro front plate once we clean this up. So the fuel rail will then go like so. Very, very far away from the turbine and very thick walled. So then the turbo, it still hits. That one I'm willing to trim or like polish that bolt head off or make it low profile. It's not the end of the world for, for me. That's sick. Now I want to get the throttle body on there. Some of the things that he was playing with was bringing the whole thing, as you can tell, it's lower. So I was worried about this hitting the engine. What we'll have to do is look at, okay, this is two and a half inch. What is the tightest radius you can do and how does that affect the oil filter right there? It's gonna go from this to two and a half and then 90 up, 90 over, go to the intercooler brick, and that back down, and then 180 into here. I guess worst case scenario, if we run into a situation, turn it back like this. It's ugly, but uh, not as ugly as this alternative. This is super exciting because you see the size of this box? I am very, very curious. This is a first time for us. This might change the way this shop operates, especially for the four rotor. Oh yeah. That looks legit. That's sick. Insane to believe that this is aluminum. Oh wow, you can see like the, the lines. Yeah, the, the way they printed it. Look at, they even printed the bell. Uh, oh wow. The company that made this sent me a message saying, I don't think we'll be able to remove material from a certain spot. Is that okay? It must be behind the bell mouth, which does not matter. That's the finish that you get. You can see that no O-ring is going to seal to that properly. We'll have to hone these out. This does not seem real. That's so sick. Like it's... Does it feel light too? Here, feel it, feel it, feel it. Oh wow. It's lighter than it should be, but it's heavy like it shouldn't be. Um, the only thing I think Finn did that I, I should have double checked is see these holes look a little, like not enough material to hold oh, a yeah. hole that big. Like we could use smaller screws. This is utterly insane. Let's put this on. Joel asked me about the thumbnail for this video and the idea of potentially holding everything over my head. Now I want to point out this weighs exactly six pounds. So in theory, I could pick the motor with this installed up. I will not be doing that though, because at some point I'm going to be the weakest link. So here we go, guys. This is the moment I've been dreaming of. I have 
can extend it just the slightest bit just to, in the error on the case of bringing it out further just you know like for these reasons and that seems to have paid off perfectly so we got an issue with the fuel line possibly more than likely hitting this corner right here but that's that's not much of an issue this whole brake line nonetheless it has to get out of the way because the exhaust has to get through that area just imagine there are fittings on the ends of this this is about as far it'll cut off right here but we have to have a fitting coming off of this side now i could have the fitting right here flat oh yeah like a bone yeah and then but if we can make it clean and and hide it like if it's if it even goes down underneath that would look just as pretty turbo comes up goes over over intercooler core at 180s and goes into there that's about as small of a motor as you can get so what is next for this well we've got to do some tapping tap these holes put that throttle body on and basically with this officially done we can continue building the rest of the intercooler system this being six pounds i think we have found a new solution for every one of our vehicles moving forward